Today we're gonna make this GoPro look like a security CCTV cam. Hey, this is Roger in Finland and today we're gonna try to make a GoPro look like a CCTV security camera. The GoPro is already giving us a wide angle and because I placed it high like a security camera would be the field of view is already matching pretty well. But what we would like to get now is that digital blotchy ugly look. And to get those kind of blotchy ugly artifacts we're gonna tamper with the bitrate of the video. To give a little bit of a reference, for example the A7 III it's shooting right now at 100 megabits per second, the GH5 it goes all the way up to 400 megabits per second, and this GoPro Hero 5 when it's shooting at full HD it has something like 30 megabits per second. So how low do we need to get to make the video look crappy? And this time around we're gonna be using FFmpeg, that's a free tool under LGPL license that you can just download and use freely, and it's command line. So today we're gonna get a little bit nerdy, but I think it's quite interesting. I'm gonna put a link below to the FFmpeg website so you can go and download it. And I'm gonna write as well the full command line that I'm gonna be using here. But I would like to go step by step for you to understand what is the command line actually doing. So to start, I'm just gonna fire up PowerShell and that's a tool that comes free with Windows. So you can use it to run your command line scripts and go to whatever folder you have uh, your FFmpeg executable. You can of course add that folder to your path so you can actually execute the ffmpeg.exe from wherever you want, but I haven't done it yet. So first executable and that's the ffmpeg.exe and that's the tool we're gonna be using to transcode our footage to something with lower bitrate. After that, minus i and then the source file location. Next we're gonna select the codec and I'm gonna go with H264. ffmpeg can also transcode to ProRes and that's something pretty useful if you need to transcode your 10 gh 5 files to be using Resolve, but I'm gonna make a separate video about that. And then we get to the bitrate. So here we're gonna set the average, what is our minimum and maximum, and then the buffer size. The average for this case to get this blotchy digital look, I'm gonna choose 200 kilobits per second, and then just put the minimum and maximum somewhere around that. I'll choose 150k for the minimum, 250k for the maximum, and I'm gonna set the buffer size of 250k also. In that way, the bitrate can wiggle a little bit, but not too far away, so we're gonna get more as a consistent look, even if it moves a little bit around, which is probably a good thing as well. And then the buffer size is quite important also. With the buffer size, we're gonna define how often will FFM but try to target the average bitrate. So once again, we have input, codec, variable bitrate with the average target, minimum bitrate, maximum bitrate, the buffer size, and finally the output file. And now let's let this run and let's take a look at the results. Alright, I think this looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna chop this in four different pieces, I'm gonna place them in the four different quadrants of the screen so we get a little bit more of this feeling of security cam and finally I'm just gonna put it into black and white. And here's the final result. take a look at what happens to lower and higher bitrates. So this is something that you can of course try to play around, but let's see what happens. So if I put the average bitrate way too low, it's gonna look not just blotchy but horrible plainly and you can actually distinguish anything. And if you put it too high then it's gonna look good. Let's take this example, and this is with the average at 100, then minimum at 80, maximum at 120, and with the buffer size at 120 also. This looks a bit too bad for what I was aiming for. On the other hand, if we put it too high, then we're not gonna sell the effect of the CCTV cam with the digital blotchy bits. In this example, I put it at 2000 kilobits per second, which is more or less 2 megabits per second, then minimum 1500, maximum 2500, and the buffer size is 2500. And as you can see, with the results, it looks a little bit too good for what we're aiming for. And I was talking before about the impact of the buffer size. So now what I'm gonna do is use the initial values for average bitrate, 200, minimum 150, maximum 250, but change the buffer size and let's see what happens. If I crank it all the way up to 2500, check what happens. At the very beginning of the video, things look grimy and ugly and blotchy as we wanted, 
but as the video goes on, things get improving, keep improving, and then we lost the look that we actually were aiming for. On the other hand, if I put the buffer at 25, which is very, very low, actually you cannot see anything, so it looks pretty horrible. So usually the recommendation is to have the buffer size somewhere between the average bitrate and the maximum. All right, so we actually covered the very, very basics of FFmpeg and how to transcode using it. We use just the codec X264, but you can do a lot of more things. It's very, very powerful. And if you're interested, let me know in the comment section what kind of transcoding you would like me to try with FFmpeg, and I'll try to make a tutorial for it. All right, so if you like the video, please click the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.